In 1988, Elder M. Russell Ballard said, addiction surrenders later freedom to choose. Through chemical means, one can literally become disconnected from his or her own will. He said this 26 years ago. In our day, we have all been touched by addiction. If we have not experienced addiction directly, we have certainly seen the effects in the lives of those around us, often those we love. I speak especially to those who at first thought believe they have not been bound by any particular addiction. I hope to extend this concept of disconnected will beyond our current understanding of addiction and apply it to all forms of bondage. In our most recent general conference, Elder Quentin L. Cook said, God intended that men and women would be free to make choices between good and evil. People can become enslaved or put themselves in bondage, not only to harmful addictive substances, but also to harmful addictive philosophies that can detract from righteous living. Bondage, subjugation, addictions, and servitude come in many forms. When we think about bondage, we often think of sin, and certainly sin will enslave us. I would like to expand our thoughts about bondage and, as Elder Cook suggests, consider other forms of bondage that we may each experience. What makes bondage so unbearable is that it makes us powerless. It limits our choices. We have all felt the hopelessness that can come when we feel bound or powerless to change something in our lives. For this discussion, we will define bondage as anything that makes us feel powerless. Bondage can come in one of two ways. It can come through our own decisions, or just as often by the decisions of those around us, things we have absolutely no say in. As I share a list of examples, I invite you to consider personally the forms that bondage takes in your life. As I've said, it can come through addiction, addiction to drugs, alcohol, immorality, pornography, and gambling, but also addictions to things not so inherently evil, things like video gaming or other forms of media like Facebook, Pinterest, shopping, eating, chocolate, sugar, sports, the list could go on. Do you spend too much time involved in your interests and hobbies? Do you spend time that you ought to be spending with your children? Have these things ever interfered with your relationships? Could your time be better spent devoting yourself to serving the Lord and your family? Bondage can come as a result of sin, weaknesses, lack of skill or education, busyness, obligations, political ideology, depression, difficult or dysfunctional relationships, our upbringing or finances in the form of poverty, debt or unemployment, illness or aging, loss or grief, and even our attitudes can enslave us. Attitudes like complacency and victimhood. Have you ever struggled with any of these? Any of them, and perhaps others you have just now considered, can render us powerless. By this definition, we can see how everyone is at one time or another, and for varying reasons, in bondage. So what do we do about it? What are the typical solutions? We can deny, surrender, or get help. John 8.32 teaches, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. We must know, live, and tell the truth in order to be free, so we can clearly see that denial is no way to deliverance. Surrender. We can surrender and give up and let hopelessness abound. This is the most devastating reaction to bondage, for it is here that the adversary can convince us that what we do doesn't matter. When we admit that we cannot do anything to deliver ourselves or our loved ones, we can sometimes be tempted to argue that none of our decisions make any difference, not one way or another. I cannot pay my debts, so what difference does it make if I accrue more? Or I will never overcome this addiction, but at least it numbs my pain. This powerless state is the worst kind of bondage because it is disguised as freedom. It is false freedom to do whatever we want. It is insidious and destructive. So we can get help. This requires a different kind of work and effort than we think. It is not a matter of picking ourselves up by our bootstraps and simply determining to no longer be powerless in our lives. We must come to understand that deliverance is far more a matter of the Lord's efforts than our own. Elder Bednar said, it is vitally important for all of us to remember that becoming men and women of integrity and honesty is not simply a matter of more personal determination, more grit, more willpower. Rather, it is accomplished through the enabling power of the atonement of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is only by the redeeming power of the Savior that we can regain, regain true freedom. 
This is not to say that we will always be delivered from the circumstances of our bondage, but from the powerlessness. So what is the best solution? Clearly, it is to get help. This ARP, or Addiction Recovery Program Manual, developed and made available through the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, offers instruction for how to make the atonement of Jesus Christ a reality in our lives each day. This is the solution for deliverance. This is help. This program can benefit anyone. This program is for you. The first three steps in this 12-step program have been summed up as I can't, he can, and I will let him. And this is the starting point of deliverance. I don't know anyone who couldn't benefit from that message, from living more fully, a recognition of our dependence on the Lord and Savior. To be empowered is to live by the Spirit, to feel his love, and to be influenced by it, to be changed by it. This is not a one-time experience, not something I achieve, but something I engage in each and every day. The ARP manual helps me to know how. We can discover for ourselves what we are taught in the ARP manual by those who live with addiction and who have overcome. You can accept with serenity the current reality of your condition when you trust in God's ability to help you. You can accept with serenity that although you cannot control the choices and actions of others, you can decide how you will act in each situation you face. You can decide with courage to trust your Father in Heaven and act according to His will. You can turn your will and life over to His care. You can decide to do what He asks and to keep His commandments. You may not be able to change some things in your life, but you can change your willingness to trust God and obey Him. You have the choice to deny, surrender, or get help. Seeking help from those who have been bound and are now delivered those who have prepared this user-friendly, easily accessible, life-changing resource is a wise choice. Wherefore, redemption cometh in and through the Holy Messiah, for he is full of grace and truth. 2 Nephi 2.6 I have known that truth. I have felt his love, and I have been delivered and empowered. I testify of him, and I am a witness of his power. The very opposite of powerlessness. I urge you to recognize your need for the the deliverance that our Savior has to offer, and to go and discover for yourself how the ARP manual can help you access that saving grace. You can most easily access the manual through LDS.org under Resources and search Addiction Recovery Program Manual. I conclude with another reference from Elder Cook. We must always remember that we do not save ourselves. We are liberated by the love, grace, and atoning sacrifice of the Savior. If we are true to his light, follow his commandments, and rely on his merits, we will avoid spiritual, physical, and intellectual bondage, for he is mighty to save.